What is up, DFS Army members? My name is Kevin Allen. You guys know me as the Fantasy Football Geek. And today, I'm talking about some of the changes we've just made to the Domination Station Optimizer specific to the MLB product. So today is July 19th. And what you're looking at here on screen is the DFS Army beta server. Okay, what that means is this is currently in our testing mode, but by the time you're watching this, this might actually be live. Not sure. So what I'm going to do today is kind of go over a full overview of how to use the Domination Station for MLB. And also, we're going to cover a lot of the new things that we've just added to the Domination Station to make it even better than before. Because that's what I'm always working on, guys. We're working on improving the tools new dynamic things. You should see what I've got going on for NFL. It's going to blow your fucking minds. It's part of the reason I need to get these updates done so we can move on. I've already started working on that, but I digress. We're back to the Domination Station MLB product, and I've loaded up. Let's see, we've got DraftKings loaded up, MLB. I've got, uh, let's see, today's slate, 2017, uh, July 19th. So here we go. Here you have the teams area, nothing new here. You get a little check mark when the lineup is confirmed for each team. Game totals, all the normal stuff. Let's get into some things that are not uh, the usual or some of the new things that we've added in recent days. So going through these options, the first thing you'll note is the salary, the salary cap slider now has a minimum function. So you can set a minimum salary allowable for any lineup that you create. This is useful for when you um, create like really, really difficult parameters for creating lineups. Eventually start to get these lineups that leave too much money on the table because you're trying to stack these teams and, you know, it's, uh, there aren't enough high-priced players or for whatever the reasons are. Okay. Okay. Doesn't matter. So you can set a minimum. Not sure you're going to use that in MLB very frequently, but it does come up in other sports. And it is a feature that you guys have requested. Here you set the number of lineups you make. I'm going to set this for 20 for the purpose of uh, this video just because we don't want to go actually I'm, I'm gonna go 10 I don't, I don't want these runs as I show you examples to go for too long optimal or tournament mode people are always confused about what optimal or tournament mode do does it's all described very nicely over here a lot of people don't like to read these little infographics so I will just explain that when you go to tournament mode what's happening is you are setting uh, a parameter that looks specifically at max exposures this number right here, max exposure. Look specifically at max exposure settings and will have a backwards look. So if you set a player at 50%, what, what the idea is is to spread that player out amongst all the lineups that you're generating rather than just the first five. Like if I set a player at 50% who's really high projected um, at 50% max in optimal mode, he'll show up in the first 50% of lineups, then he won't show up anymore. In tournament mode, what he'll do is show up in a total of 50% of lineups, but he'll be in lineup number one, but not number two. Then he'll show again in lineup number three, but not number four. So it spreads out the player distribution amongst all of the lineups that you're creating. And the biggest positive that it has is, let's say you have two or three very highly projected value plays. What ends up happening, if you set them all to 50%, 50 they'll show up together all three of them in the first 50% of lineups generated, and then you'll get none of them in the last 50%. Whereas what we want in order to try to win tournaments is an even distribution in case one of them busts, you have some lineups with just the other two, or if two of them bust, you have lineups with just one of them, etc., etc. So that's what tournament mode does. That's not even new. That's just what's here. The new component is this prioritize completing lineups above max exposure settings. This should always be checked off make it a habit of just checking that i'm actually going to set it so that that default is checked and that just cleans up a math issue um, that we've run into with tournament mode um, where you know if you set too many people below 50 percent it essentially looks back and it can't find anybody and then it just freezes up the tool it's a weird math thing um just always check it off as a matter of fact at some point we might just build that in without having you check it at all uh, I did an example of how that works on the PGA video that I made for the new update as well, so you can check that out. I don't want to get too deep into it. All right, other new things. Uh, randomization percentage. Again, a lot of people asking me what this is and how it works. This just sets a randomization of plus or minus whatever percentage you set on the player projection that you select. So I'm going to I'm gonna quickly jump to a position 
And I'm going to show you two similar projected players. Yeah, here we go. That's at the same price. The key is to find them at the same price. So let's see if we can find something because I want to give an example. Okay, here's one. You've got two outfielders. Same price, 4900 One is projected at 7.98. The other one is 8.09. Now, here's the thing. An optimizer will always default to the slightly higher projection. But the reality is, and this is a lot of these changes have to do with this whole philosophy, this approach. But the reality is, there isn't that much of a difference between a player with a, you know, one-tenth of a point difference in projection versus another player. An optimizer, though, is very linear. It's always going to take the highest projected one. So it will jam this guy into every single lineup every single time. Now, I'm going to use this example for more than one thing, but uh, because actually this really works for some other stuff I want to talk about. But if you take a look at um, these two guys, again, the optimizer is going to always default to uh, Mercado here. But we don't really want that. That's not the best way to approach DFS at all. If the projections are close, you want a little bit of sort of mix of these guys. So with randomization on, what will happen is both of these projections, every lineup that's run will get a plus or minus 5%. In the case of an 8-point projection, that's about um, 0 0.40 uh, fantasy points plus or minus. So in that scenario, these two are likely to be almost mixed in 50-50. Like they're that close together, they're going to wind up mixing in 50-50. And here's another outfielder that's projected higher, right? So uh, for the same salary. So in the case of this guy, again, it would always default to him. But in this scenario, it's going to go back and forth a little bit because there'll be situations where this one is maybe 8.4 and this one's 8.8 point, uh, 8 point, let's say, 4 as well. Like they're in some outer circumstances, these guys will even surpass uh, this guy in terms of their total projection. Um, speaking of which, so that's what randomization does. But I want to show this ex same example for uh, some other very exciting features that we've just added. So hybrid mode is a combination of DFS Army rating, DFS Army projection. All right, so we've added optimized by grade and optimized by hybrid score. These are the new features in the domination station. I'm going to go over that, and I'm actually going to show you that same example of those same two players because it really, really works out well. So DFS Army grades. Here's the first thing. I'm going to go to the pitching position to show you uh, an example. Now, one of the flaws of MLB optimization is that when you look at pitchers, they are just projected so much higher. And this is DraftKings. It's less uh, uh, dramatic here than on FanDuel, but they're just projected so much higher than most position players that the optimizer is naturally going to default um, to the most expensive pitcher most of the time, the highest projected, because that's where the most raw points are in terms of projection. The problem is floor and ceiling combinations are much, much greater for um, hitters than they are for pitchers. And in tournaments, there is a, a really, really um, sharp approach to MLB tournaments where you're emphasizing pitchers who can get home runs, basically. That's what we want. We want home run hitters. So we've added a couple different possibilities. We have our DFS Army grades. We've been showing them all season on the Domination Station. And it's a great way if you're just looking at, um, at the players uh, for a visual to get an idea of, you know, who's in a good spot. You, you know, um, right now to me, for example, Brandon McKay with his 83.8 projection or, or grade really stands out because everybody else in this range is kind of shitty. And what's interesting is even though it stands out on his grade, you know, his actual raw projection doesn't really stand out from the crowd here at all. But would you want this 13.91 projected guy with an 83.8 rating? Or would you prefer this, um, you know, let's see, this 18-point guy with the 62 rating? Well, you know, arguments can be made for both, right? But in some circumstances, you know, the rating will win out, and hey, this guy's going to put up a bigger number than expected. And in some situations the uh, raw projection will win out and, and they'll put up a bigger number than expected. Um, I'll talk about a third possibility here in a moment that, that um, kind of uh, melds these two things together. But So we wanted the ability to optimize by DFS Army grade. It really is a good approach. We've tested it quite a bit. Our grading system is excellent. It doesn't produce lineups that look weird. But um, so, you know, in this case, if you're optimizing by grade, you'll never get Verlander here and you're never going to pay up because... DeGrom has a 100-point rating as well for a little bit cheaper. So let's 
let's do that. Let's let's run an optimized by grade. I want to see which which um, pitcher shows up. Now I want to also point out something interesting here. Oh, I have the um, you know I got to turn off randomization or my example is just not going to work. <laughs> Now, randomization will actually create a situation like, all right, let's show what's happening here. You're seeing the grades here, right? Instead of actual fantasy points, you're seeing the player's grades here being shown. Now, in this case, I told you DeGrom was 100%, uh, projected for 100 points, but he got 100.24. Why? Because, uh, and there's a 96, because randomization was scored. So every lineup gives you sort of a random. And in here, Justin Verlander, who's much more expensive, showed up at 99.157, probably because in this specific lineup, the uh, the randomization put a much lower number on DeGrom. So this is a good example of how randomization works. I'm turning it off, though, for this example, because you'll see with randomization off, we should get DeGrom pretty much in every lineup here. Yeah, there we go. Oh, wait a minute. What did I turn off here? If it's on grades. Yeah, DeGrom, 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 DeGrom. Now, the reason why you saw... Yeah, Verlander in one is because we have DeGrom set to 99%. So it's going to it's gonna default away from him, and it will get you um, Verlander in that one lineup because he's the next closest thing at 100. The other guy who's popping in a ton is Brandon McKay, right? He should be in almost every single lineup. There he is. So DeGrom, 88%, McKay, 100%. There you go. So in essence, using this system, we didn't default to the highest-priced pitcher. You know, we went down a little bit. Optimized by grade. So for those of you who have liked the DFS Army grading system, we think it's awesome. Um, this is a great way to get a different sort of um, uh, set of lineups than what you would by optimizing just by raw projection. The biggest reason I like it is sometimes you see players that are really, really close together. Like look at these two guys, 3,300, 3,300, right? The, the Projection is this even slightly, you know, it's about the same, 6.5, 6.57. But we've got this guy, Danny Jensen, graded out a lot better than Flowers here in this spot. So if you're just optimizing by projection, you're going to get Tyler Flowers in every lineup if that's how the lineups were working out. But going by grade, you're going to wind up defaulting more, uh, pretty much in every lineup, actually, to Danny Jensen, whose grade is much, much higher. Simple as that. Now, the final new addition to the system. So when I was um, envisioning Optimized by Grade, I really love the idea, and it's something we're very excited to have added to um, now MLB. It's going to be added to, or it was added to PGA as well. We love our grading system for golf. It's awesome. It's one of my favorite. I fucking love it, right? And if you're playing this weekend golf, I mean, the grading system was spitting out, screaming, screaming for this guy. This is the British Open. And I've just seen it the last multiple times. Like this guy, Eric Van Ruyen, who is for a $7,100 player at 7% ownership. This thing put him in 100% of lineups, uh, the optimized by grade. And Van Ruyen right now is... Uh, Sitting in first place in this contest, or, or, or very close to first place. Let me see where he's at. Minus four, he's in 12th place. Six per, uh, seven percent ownership. So I love the grading system. It's a different way and different approach to optimization. It brings uniqueness. It brings an edge. But wait, there's more. So I've envisioned, I, I love the grades. I love our projection system as well. Both really, really good. So how do you get a combination of the two? That's what's called hybrid score, and we have optimized by hybrid score as well. Now, I'm going to show you, going back to that outfielder example, how hybrid score works. I've actually made some modifications to this formula, so by the time this goes live, it will be even more dramatic. Um, it's going to favor hitters, first of all, 
over pitchers. And let's see what happened. Is Yelich? Oh, where are hitters? All right, it doesn't matter, but let's. It's going to favor hitters over pitcher overall. Now let's go back to that example here of where where were we? Yeah, here we go. This example. So in this scenario, we've got Oscar Mercado, Mercado projected a little bit higher. Luis Gurriel, much better grade. Now, if you look at the hybrid score, you know, it, it, again, this is a very dramatic difference, so the numbers are going to be dramatically different, but not as dramatically. Here, you have a 30-point um, margin, almost a 25-point margin between the grade, uh, the grades of these two guys. Uh, in essence, when we go to hybrid score, it's a melding which takes into account projection and grade. And, and actually, it's a better, uh, let's show a better example here. Actually, I like this example better. Louis Guriel and Sterling Mark. Okay, so Mark, Starling. Starling has an 8.92 point projection, a full point above Lourdes. Just about a full point. Now, again, the optimizer is always going to use uh, Starling here. Now, his rating isn't dramatically worse, and we want it to use Starling more. But if you optimize by rating, you know, there's a very big difference here. So again, the hybrid score is a blending of rating and projection to come up with a, a hybrid mix. So there's a multiplier here that's proprietary that I've come up with um, of, the, of the rating itself. There's a multiplier of the projection itself, and it will come in and create a number that's sort of a mix of rating and projection. I love the hybrid system. I've actually made a slight adjustment to it that's not showing here, but it will um, increase the viability of differences in, in the actual projections because I do want to emphasize that, and we want to sort of get the best of all worlds with the hybrid system. I hope this is making sense, guys. Um, finally, I want to I point out one last new feature that I love, and that is total projected ownership showing at the top of every lineup generated. Love this feature. So in essence, what we know is this. In order to, we have awesome ownership projections, first of all. So they're right here. You see them, you understand them. Brandon McKay, 53% ownership projection. What the fuck, right? So in MLB, which is a high variance sport. All right, so here's a quick, here's a quick tip. Anytime you see some pitcher who's not a super stud, projected owned at 53%, Make sure you, you you know use some line that's stacked against him. You as a user have to pay close attention to these ownership projections, right? But as a lineup as a whole, here's the thing: we know that more ownership in a lineup reduces your chance uh, in a sense of winning tournaments. We don't want to be super chalky when attacking massive um, tournaments. So the solution is to look at these and you can generate, let's say I want to make 10 lineups, but I don't want to be too chalky. And again, I would never make a lineup without stacks in place. So let's get that in place as well. Never make a lineup without stacks in place. So let me make sure that server side is actually functional right now because uh, on the beta server, I just want to, I was told it should work. Let's see, come on, give me lineups. Yeah, baby, okay, we are functional. So server side is working on the beta, beta, so you can actually run actual lineups today and do full testing. But all right, I just ran lineups that were stacks. And let me run more than this. Let me run 30 of these now because we've got this going. Now what I've done is set the stack to 5-2. I haven't specified any teams. I'm doing that for a reason. I don't want to sit here and worry uh, too much about this specific slate. I'm. Uh, this is the, the purpose of this video is to show the new features. Here we go. So we're running new lineups. Notice the speed. Nice and quick. These are stacked lineups, 5-2 stacks. But this is one key thing. Now let's say I only want to make 20 lineups. So, but this just generated 30 for me. So I can sort by total projected ownership. Now this is for every sport. Um, notice that the top projected was actually you know, only 50%. But here, when I sorted by total percent, this this lineup, 120% projected ownership. So very chalky. Got a lot of chalky players in here. Now, as I look through it, it's not actually all that big of a deal. This doesn't look like overly chalky to me. Uh, it's not bothering me. But across other sports, 
there is something to be said for not using overly chalky lineups. So Brandon McKay, we already talked about on this slate, 53% owned projected. That is like way too chalk for me for MLB. No matter what he ends up doing, I don't give a shit. Um, I'd rather, uh, if I'm attacking a 100,000 person contest and 53% are going to be on this pitcher, fuck that. I don't want anything to, I'm, gonna, I'm fading him, right? So, but nonetheless, I mean, McKay showed up here, you know, and okay, only 53% of lineup, so that is good. Did I use hybrid score? Yeah, I did, so there we go. Uh, all right, see, <laughs> putting in hybrid score leveled it out a little bit. But here's what you could do. Boom. Just eliminate the high projected ownership lineups. I only wanted to make 20. So you can remove a bunch of these and just leave the ones that are under 100% or under 50%, whatever you want. Right, you could find your way to lower owned lineups like this. Look, you know, we've eliminated a bunch of them. How many are left? Like, you know, download what? Yeah, there's 17 left. So let's say I wanted to make 10. I could, you know, start with 30 and then just leave the bottom 10 ownerships. Now, I'm not saying to do that. I'm just saying that is what you can do to avoid having uh, lineups with t too high ownership. That really works in high bearing sports. That works in most sports. Okay, again, not saying to do that, and that I, this is not instruction on you know what you should always do every single time. Each slate is unique. Each approach is unique. You know, play them by ear in that sense. Do not just go out there and. Yeah, but but this is a, a cool feature. So the ability to sort lineups by projected total projected ownership, and do what you want with that information. Remove. I've already talked about how I use projected ownership to create lineups um, all the time. That's a very, very important factor. And you have to understand what kind of contests you're attacking to make it work. So again, to go over everything, what we've added, salary cap minimum slider, randomization percentage, the ability to sort by not just fantasy points like we always did, but DFS Army grades and hybrid scores. Now, I did get a question in Slack as far as why um, even when I change to, for example, sort by grades, do the grades not pop up into this column? Or if I choose to sort by hybrid score, I mean, you need to press go, but um, the hybrid scores do not pop up in this column. Now, I'm going to explain why and explain how you as the user can control it. So if I'm optimizing by grade, when you're strictly going by the DFS Army grade. That's it. There's no adjusting it. All you can do is use min, max exposures to control your exposures. You're not going to change these grades. They're locked into stone. Um, one thing to be concerned about, every now and again, you get a player with a zero grade. And we're going to try to avoid having this happen. We're going to try to manually fill these in. But the reason that happens is there are some parameters in the DFS Army grading system. Like if a guy was just on IR and hadn't played in, in a couple weeks, we, we can't give them a grade. Part of the grades come with recent performance and stuff like that. So, um, you know, there are components of the grade that take that into account. So we're going to try to do our best to manually update these whenever these type of things happen. These are usually somebody just getting called up from, uh, from uh, IR or you know, something along those lines. There's some reason they haven't been playing. And generally, it wasn't assumed whenever we were running the grades that these people were going to be playing. So we're going to try to avoid that. But it's something to keep in mind and be aware of. Okay. Secondarily, I mentioned before, if you're going to optimize by grade, you can't adjust it. All you can do is control min-max exposures. You can uncheck a player. You can control their exposures using these settings. But hybrid score has a pretty cool way uh, that, that we've come up with to control it. Now, before I talk about that, the reason that switching to DFS Army grades doesn't shift the grade into this column for you to adjust is because the way our logic works on the domination station, putting a zero on a player removes them from the player pool. Watch what happens. He's gone. Where is he? In exclusions. So if I go to my exclusions here, you'll see Christian Yelich. Let's put him back. I don't want him out of the pool. That's fucking Christian Yelich. What are you crazy? But we needed to keep the logic of that column the same because we don't want to end up with players whose 
projections are zeroed out because they're not expected to play today still ending up in your lineup so that is why we maintained that even as you change to optimize by grade or optimize by hybrid score it doesn't change this column but here's the cool thing hybrid score now let's say I'm optimizing my hybrid score which again is my personal preferred method because it does take into account both grade and projection if I want to raise the hybrid score I can raise this number I'm going to raise it to 20 and look what happens let's see what happens to the hybrid score I haven't even tested this yet boom because projection is a component of the hybrid score you can still change your hybrid score by changing this number so likes and dislikes that all does have an effect on the hybrid score very cool very cool so let's see here Yelich 5900 Trout 5800 10.6 10.1 100 grade 100 grade yeah it's just slightly higher you know when you look at the hybrid score all all remains the same in this case the difference between the two players is yeah it should be about the same it's it's about point oh uh, let's see this is about point um point six exactly difference and here when you go to the hybrid score it's about 1.2 difference 71.2 that's 70 so on a percentage basis it's less dramatic and that's again what we want to see happen when we go to hybrid score this is not you know this is showing almost a dramatic you know six percent difference in the in the projection but they're both hundred ratings they're both great players we want a mix of both of them and with hybrid score enabled you know you're more likely to get more because this is only a uh, sort of a two percent variance where here it's a six percent variance between these two and if you had any sort of randomization on even a little bit it's just gonna mix up uh, and match players like this let me find some other um, some other highlighted examples if I can all right here's one all right this is one I, well I'm trying to see any any kind of interesting examples of how hybrid score really works but you know here two similarly rated players um, this guy Soto is projected quite a bit higher than um, Rosario when you look at the hybrid score three point difference so uh, still you know a fairly nice little dramatic higher percentage difference than what you see here in this grade this is like four percent this would be about six percent difference in these two in these two uh, projections just let's okay here are two guys oh here's a great example same salary same position same exact rating Fam, 10.3, Poog, Puig, 8.8. When you look at the hybrid score, the favor is still Fam. If you just went by projection, I mean, it would be all Fam. But the hybrid score, it, it mixes them up. It, it kind of mutes it a little bit. I'm trying to see another scenario where I can show uh, an interesting example. All right, here's another interesting example. Um, in the case of this one, in the case of this one right here, Lorenzo can't, let's see the salaries, same salaries. I'm, I'm just showing some examples of the difference between hybrid score, grade, and projection, and why um, it makes sense to use this system. Kane, 84.6 point grade, Peterson, 93.1. So this player has a higher rating but a slightly lower projection they're very close the projection but slightly I mean the higher the rating is slightly higher so if you defaulted to projection you would get all Lorenzo Kane in this in this salary range you ain't getting this guy it's got a low projection and a low rating so you get all Lorenzo Kane but we have Peterson rated slightly higher so if you go to hybrid score, the, the difference is muted a little bit. So in the case of the hybrid score, when you look at it, this one's, uh, the difference here is, uh, the difference here is dramatic. Again, it's just a more muted difference between the projections of these two players, where if you just went by projection, you'd get Kane. If you went by hybrid score or, or grade, you would get Josh, Josh Peterson. So just an example of how this works. I've actually um, made an adjustment. So these hybrid scores are going to change a little bit. I've adjusted 
um, to add more emphasis on the projection itself and the difference in the two projections of different players because um, the initial system as I see it right now uh, does favor grades more than I want it to so by the time Monday rolls around these numbers will look different so that's just a formulaic change I made once I kind of have been testing this out but all that said I couldn't be more excited to bring this final MLB update to you guys um, again you already know how to use the domination station the sharp way I always suggest using legacy randomized hitter stacks this is my favorite um, stack type right now if you're attacking tournaments like the one dollar or the um, four dollar or mass entry the the elevens whatever it is you should always have stacked lineups we've seen the last few days that certain teams go off for 16 runs the only way you win the tournament is if you have five players from that team in your lineup I, I saw the last couple days we've had multiple 16 run scorers and that's how you win tournaments that's how you win tournaments you you um, basically score 16 you you stack the team that scores 16 sorry I'm distracted by that phone ringing um, you, you choose the team that scores 16 runs that day and you stack them correlation is everything in MLB so use this function Gotta pause it. No, oh, there it ended. Okay, there we go. So use this function, MLB hitter stack rules. Set your stacks. You could do this is uh, DraftKings. So you could do five three. I prefer five two. I like the one offs. I like stacks to allow one off um, batters in there, and you could choose who those guys are by by um, uh, liking or loving or 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 adoring players. And feel free to check out sort uh optimized by grade feel free to check out optimized by hybrid score again my preference is hybrid score but it gives you a lot of different options here and each of these systems is going to give you unique and different lineups certainly from the outside world which is not using these are completely custom um, nobody has this uh, sort of system in place uh, we've tested this we've tested so optimized by grade it works it's a solid approach um, I've been testing optimized by hybrid score as well. Um, I can just tell you that it's going to work. It's going to be great. Optimized by projection is great. You don't have to change just because there's a new feature here. Again, there's a lot of new features that pop up, but this is for those of you who want to kind of approach things differently. Um, use these features. They are awesome, and we're really excited to bring them to you. And just a little heads up, if you've made it all the way this far through this video, Next up for the Domination Station, we will be adding college football uh, coverage. Um, it's going to be awesome. College football season starts uh, towards the end of August, so we expect to have it ready and up and running by the time college football season hits. And we are working on a all new and amazing version of NFL stacking, which I call Correlation Mode. It's got a correlation boost. Everything is about building smart lineups to attack tournaments. That's what we're trying to do. We're trying to find new and innovative ways to create lineups that are designed to win tournaments. It's that simple. Understand the line, the types of contests you're attacking as you're making these lineups. And again, the largest contests, the tournaments as I call them, require a certain approach to lineup construction that um, might feel counterintuitive. This is the advantage that you have being a DFS Army subscriber. We know these approaches. We preach these approaches. We know what you have to do. All you've got to do is do it. All you've got to do is do it. Stack those lineups. All right. That's it for now, guys. Good luck this week. Um, underneath this video posted in our team forums, I will have the link to the domination station beta server that should be up we need you testing this use it run it check it out it's not live yet but everything here should be fully functional if you find any issues with anything here please let us know we will clean those up before it goes live so the more live the more testing we do of the system before it goes live the less likely we are to have issues and you know every time we go live with a new update something always pops up so let's try to avoid that and do our best to kind of have a smooth transition to this update and again the next time uh, we're looking at an update will hopefully be mid-August 
sometime before college football season starts when we could pull it, put in the college football and hopefully the new ML, uh, NBA stacking approach. One last thing I'm going to show you here. Um, when you run stacks, you can now, you will now see, get a readout of what teams were used in stacks. And if you'll note, the way our system works with randomized, you get a really nice mix of pretty much every team available. Uh, as part of a stack, if you don't want it to be sort of random in terms of team selection, you should set your parameters as you like them. So if I loved Boston this week, I can go 100% and they will show up in 100% of lineups as far as one of these stacks. And I could go 50% and I can go 30%. I never uh, advise going over 200% in this case because going over 200% is impossible. There's only two um, stack teams. And even going all the way up to 200% just leaves you no leeway. And we want to leave the tool at least a little bit of leeway to sort of plug in teams that we haven't necessarily uh, suggested for these stacks. You don't have to do that, but it is something I like to do. Boom. Let's see here. Just ran 30. And we should have 100% Boston. There you go. 50% Philly. Just like just like we asked for, but now you could totally check it here. Very cool. We have some other readout functions coming as well for the NFL update and for the future of MLB. But for now, this is where we're at. So enjoy, everyone. And like I said, a few more weeks, NFL season's uh, coming, and we'll have some new updates coming up specifically for the NFL and college football product that I think you guys will love. All right. Until next time.